Hello and a very warm welcome back again guys. I hope every one of you is doing good. Today's topic is the magic of subtotals. Why this function is very important in today's business world and why you should know it before going into excel files. So let me define it first. What a subtotal function is. A sum or a total of a part of a group or column of figures as it is in an accounting statement for example. This is a little bit tricky so let me explain it in a layman language. For example, I have one, two, three sheep. So this is the subtotal of the group sheep. One, two, three, four. I have four rabbits. So this is another subgroup. So this is the subtotal of this subgroup, four. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, five horses. So I have a group of animals and I have a total number of 12 animals. And there is a subgroup of sheep, a subgroup of rabbit, a subgroup of horses. So these subgroups have their own subtotals. So that's how guys, this subtotal works. Within a total, there are certain groups or categories and they have their own totals. And that's how this function works to understand and learn about these subtotals. The syntax works like subtotal, then function number, you want to sum. Function number means you want to sum it, you want to count it, you want to take an average of it, and so on and so forth. And then onwards there is reference one, two, three, and it goes on. This reference means the cells which you want to perform this function on. So this is again a, a little bit more technical now. So I'll go back to the Excel rather, and I will explain it to you in Excel rather than going into the definitions um, textually. So this is um, an example data that I have where I'll perform certain subtotals. I will first of all add a column here so I can perform a subtotal on the total value. So um, let's say I will put Control Shift L and it makes my filters available. In the filters, for example, I filter um, one. So when I filter department number one, I can see there are a certain number of department uh, parts which were sold. They have their own quantities, costs, and values as well. Now I want to have a formula which works with this. So for that reason, I'll have to have this function of subtotal. So the syntax, as I said, is equal to subtotal and then the brackets. When I press the bracket, you can see it gives me an option. Like option is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are the most used um, options. Average, count, count A, minimum, maximum product, sum, etc., etc. So if you want to take a sum of this, this column, so you'll press nine, or you'll select from here and then comma. When you press comma, you select the range of cells. As I said, reference is the range of cells. So I will select all the cells, all the data, and I press enter. Now the formula is applied, which means that now whenever I will select, this is by the way at the moment showing me the total of all this. So what I do is I select department one and it shows me the department one total. If I go to department two, now the numbers have changed. It, sh it shows me the total sum of department two. So guys, this was the basic functionality of this subtotal feature or function, but the story is not finishing here. We have a lot more to go. The magic will start now. So I will remove this um, rather the, the additional row that I added. So now we have the rough data here. So we always apply uh, subtotals from the ribbon. When you go in the ribbon, you find this data. And in the data, at the very end, there is the outline part. And in the outline, we have groups, subgroups, ungroups, and then subtotals. So the subtotal is the feature that we are going to use, which quickly calculates rows of related data. Related data, you remember the sheep were related. 
rabbits were related and and how you call it horses they were also related if you remember from the example that i share with you guys so it returns a, a subtotal in a list or a database it is generally easier to create a list with subtotals by using the subtotal command over here so this is one of the best features i believe uh, in in the desktop excel that it, it enables us to do these subtotals so once the subtotal is created, you can e even modify it by editing the sub subtotals and then you can go on. So now um, I'm going back to uh, our lesson and the lesson is subtotal. So I will click on the subtotal. The moment I click the subtotal, it has automatically selected the table and it has given me a menu. Now this menu is asking me certain things. So let's speak now to Excel. Let's talk to Excel. So let's say what Excel is saying. Excel is saying, I will make a subtotal on each change in. Now, this is this is very critical. You know, you should know what is the change in. So change happening here. So what I will suggest you is whenever you go for this subtotal, the first thing you have to do is wherever you want to apply the subtotal, for example, I want to apply on this department field. So in each department change, which will be department one, two, three, four, I want Excel to make a subtotal. So I want to have a subtotal of department, each department. So what I'll do is now, I will simply go and I will sort it ascending or descending. So I did it in a way that now I have every department in a particular order. So first department, then second, third, and fourth, and so on and so forth. So now it is sorted properly. So once it is sorted out, then you go back to the subtotal menu. So Excel is saying at each change in, you remember the field, it is department. So I will select department. So at each change in department, use function sum, okay fine we want to have a sum of the total values so it is already selected so if it is in a case it is not selected you have to select the total value this is the feature that i want to use so i want to sum up i will reread it now what excel is speaking to me excel is saying at each change in department field so wherever there's a change means wherever there's a category finished wherever we have sheep finished then it will make a subtotal. And then wherever there will be a rabbits finished, it will make a subtotal. And wherever there will be a horses finished, it will take another subtotal. So that's how it is working. So rabbits and horses and sheep are contained in this department field. And the sum is here in this field. So this is, this is fairly clear, I hope now, that how it is making a sum. Now I will press OK. Now there are some certain more things which are not kind of noteworthy at this moment because we don't have any other uh, subtotal applied. So replace current subtotals, I don't care honestly because there are no subtotals already, so that's fine. And summary below. So it will make a summary of the data at the end. That is, that's also fine with me. So now I have this ready. I will simply press OK button and you see now I have all the departments subtotal so first department here you can see it is subtotal in this yellow field so department one total is 3254 maybe it's wrong let's see I will sum it up and then you can see in the bottom 3254 correct then we move down to the second department and you see the second department is also finished here and we have a subtotal here 5,943. Now moving on, I can see there's another subtotal of department three. Cool, that's good. And then I move to the department four down there. There's another subtotal for that. And at the very end, I can see department five is also subtotal. And as I said, there, there will be a summary at the end. So you can see the total as well down there of all the subtotal values. So this is what we have now applied on our data. We have a subtotal functioning very good for us. Uh, we can simply go by clicking on two to have this view where we have department one, two, three, four, five, and their totals. If I sum that up, it's equal to the grand total that is here. So this is our grand total. That's how it works. And uh, if I want to take the full picture, I will press on three 
in the corner if i want to take the minimum picture i will press one and it will it will hide everything so two is the ideal where i have the departments and if i want to see any one of the departments for example i want to see the department three i will come on the corner in this plus sign and press it and i'll see the department three here so it is subtotaled over here that's how this uh, subtotal functionality works guys uh, this 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 feature is fine so you can do different other other functionalities as well on this um, for example i will go back onto this and uh, i will say rather than submission i want to take an average so what was the average payment done in this in this um, each of these uh, subtotal so when i press ok it will replace the current subtotal and it will make another subtotal which is average so now you see there's an average taken so the subtotal has taken one function this is the same formula by the way which i showed you by typing in so excel is automatically putting this formula in by putting first function and you remember what was the first function that was average so excel has taken automatically an average over here for me and uh, so on and so forth we can apply all the formulas of our own choice uh, now uh, I want to see that okay fine and there was a there was an average or a total I'll rather go back and change it to the sum form because sum is the best we can see the sum of each and every department over here I'll press 2 so that I can see the departments I will select visible cells and I will give them a yellow color as I did before so now I have let's say all the departments ready with me sorry now what I want to do is I want to make a nested subtotal nested subtotal means a subtotal within a subtotal which means I want to see for example I have the total of these uh, department one invoices or part number invoices which were here like three thousand two hundred and fifty four dollars but I want to also see that how many of the invoices were cleared in this particular database. So for that reason, um, I'll have to again go back to the subtotals. So I want to see is on each change in department field, there should be a count of not the total value, but rather the department field. So it will count all these line items in department field and then it will count it up rather than sum, it will count it up now the tricky part comes replace the current subtotals no so i will disable this feature which is which means that whatever subtotal is already there in my excel it will remain there and i will have another subtotal over there which will be this counting feature i pressed ok so there you go it worked and guys it worked well you can see now we have two subtotals one is the count you can see with the three function so now I can see that I have a functionality which shows me a total sum and a count of the invoices. So I have 18 invoices worth uh, 3,254. Let's move on to the next one. Yes, here we also have 19 invoices worth 5,900. Then we have in the department three, uh, 10 invoices worth 2,300 and so on and so forth. So that's how we can make a or build up a nested subtotal. So guys, this uh, subtotal functionality is quite useful. You can use it in, in, your, in your Excel tables, in pivot tables, wherever you wish to, to make it easy for you uh, to analyze the data. I hope you enjoyed it, guys, and uh, looking forward to talk to you again then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.